Fellow countrymen and women and friends of Ghana, let me start first by wishing you all a happy, healthy, productive, and a prosperous new year. Secondly, I wish to express formally my profound gratitude to His Excellency the President for the opportunity given me to serve the good people of Ghana in his administration over the last six years and for graciously accepting my resignation as cabinet minister responsible for trade and industry with effect from the 16th of January, 2023. Thirdly, I wish to use this platform to formally announce my decision to contest the flag bearership of the new patriotic party when the party officially opens nominations for that purpose. His Excellency the President, Nana Adodankwa Ekofuado, has been a good friend of mine and will always remain so, based on our shared commitment to the ideals and principles that inspired the founding fathers of our great party, the new patriotic party. We have competed in the past, but have always worked together thereafter. The president has laid a strong foundation for the socio-economic development of our country, although I believe there are things that could have been done differently. My vision is to build a superstructure on this foundation that will bring prosperity to our nation. The pre-COVID-19 performance of our economy, the flagship programs, including the free SHS, the One District, One Factory initiative, the Planting for Food and Jobs program, the Agenda 111 project, and the COVID-19 response initiatives are all testimony of the strong leadership that the president has provided over the last six years. In spite of all the above, however, it is an undeniable fact that the combined effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war has stampeded our country into a crisis of unprecedented proportions with a negative impact on the economy, on businesses, and on our social lives. I have no doubt that the anticipated International Monetary Fund IMF support package will restore confidence in our economy and bring it back to pre-COVID levels. Fellow countrymen and women, this is the 17th time that we have gone to the IMF over the last 57 years. We promise never to go back, but we've gone back. One of the lessons that we have learned from the recent developments is that Ghana's economy is still fragile, vulnerable, and susceptible to both external and domestic shocks. This primarily is as a result of the fact that our economy is highly dependent on the export of commodities with little or no value addition. Indeed, the 5.1% projected GDP growth for the Ghanaian economy for 2023 is based on the anticipated increase in commodity prices. To avoid going back to the IMF, we need a new plan, a plan that will lead us to a more self-reliant and resilient economy. That plan must move Ghana from stability and growth to transformation. Fellow countrymen and women, if by the will of God and through your goodwill, I voted first as the flag bearer of the MPP and subsequently as president of the Republic in the next general elections, I will become the transformational leader of our time who will build on the foundations that have been laid by successive leaders of our nation over the last 65 years. To achieve this strategic goal of transforming our dear country to become the shining star of the new Africa, I will, as president, launch and lead the execution of the great transformational plan, GTP of Ghana, which will span the period 2025 to 2030. The post-COVID economic recovery program currently being implemented with the anticipated support 
from the IMF from 2023 to 2025 will be a transitional economic program leading to the rollout of this great transformational plan. Countrymen and women, before I proceed to provide a brief insight into the key elements of this great transformational plan, seven critical considerations will need to be taken into account to guarantee the success of the plan. First, the primacy of the private sector in our national development agenda. The private sector, both domestic and foreign, formal and informal, has to be at the center of our transformational agenda. The government's focus must be to facilitate the process of making our private sector competitive by creating an enabling environment for businesses. Two, attitude to work and enforcement of discipline. We as a people should appreciate the need for discipline in all spheres of our national lives and change our attitude to work. Whether you are working for the private sector or for government, as a worker, you are not doing a favor to your employer. It is your duty to ensure that you earn your living from the efforts of your labor. Three, corruption and petty theft or thievery, particularly from the public purse, deny our country the benefits of utilizing its tax revenue and other resources for the development of our country. Four, the arrogance of power has been a major obstruction to progress in our country. People in positions of authority must understand that leadership is an opportunity to serve the people and not to lord over them. In servant leadership, humility is an asset and not a weakness. Five, passion for excellence. As a country, we must celebrate competence and excellence and not mediocrity. Six, as a people, we must focus more on getting things done than just talking. Ghana is gradually becoming a NATO country. No action, talk only. We need to remember that the use of time is a zero-sum game. What Ghana needs now are solutions and actions, not debates. Seven, and last but not the least, our politics in Ghana is too divisive. This keeps out some of our best talents in offering themselves for political appointments. Yes, we pride ourselves as being the bastion of democracy in Africa, but that does not mean that we should allow partisan politics to destroy our collective interests. These seven critical considerations outlined above will provide what I would describe as the soft power for the effective implementation of our great transformational plan. Fellow countrymen and women, let me now provide a brief synopsis of the great transformational plan. The GTP will be anchored on the following key pillars. One, a strong macroeconomic environment. The success of the GTP will depend primarily on strong macroeconomic fundamentals, which would include, among other things, a stable currency, low inflation, sustainable debt levels, revenue optimization, and tight expenditure control to guarantee fiscal balance, low competitive interest rates, strong external reserves backed by high levels of liquidity to support the financial sector. To a large extent, the IMF support program when fully executed, will create the appropriate conditions that will underpin the great transformational plan. Two, a new agricultural revolution, in brief, NAR for Ghana. The NAR will be based on five critical elements. One, optimizing value to farmers by the establishment of farmer-owned large-scale commercial farms and processing facilities which will bring the full benefits of the agricultural value chain to farmers. Two, introducing technology and innovation into agriculture through research and development in agronomy, mechanization, irrigation, and plantation management. 
This will build on the foundations laid by the planting for food and jobs and planting for export and rural development programs. Our farmers cannot be competitive without technology and innovation. Three, the establishment of licensed food distribution and marketing companies by the private sector throughout the country at the district level to be supported by the government. These companies will constitute a vital link between farmers and market queens in the urban and peri-urban areas. It will be complemented by the introduction of a digitized food distribution and marketing online platform, which will connect producers to buyers and consumers. Four, the strengthening of the Ghana Commodity Exchange as the marketplace for all actors in the agricultural value chain. Five, deepening the current regime for lending and financing for the agricultural sector. Six, enhancing the deregulation of the cocoa sector by deepening private sector participation in the buying and marketing, including export of cocoa. Seven, mass citizens' participation in agriculture by introducing an operation on a farm program for the Ghanaian citizenry in general. Three, industrial transformation. This will build on the successes of government's 10-point industrial transformation program, including the One District, One Factory Initiative, the establishment of strategic anchor industries to diversify the economy beyond cocoa and gold. For example, the automobile assembly, garments and textiles, pharmaceuticals, and the petrochemical industry, enhancing the growth and development of small and medium enterprises, establishment of industrial parks and special economic zones, and supporting domestic retail trade and distribution. Four, accelerated infrastructure development, promoting private sector financing for public infrastructure such as roads, railways, ports and harbors, water supply systems, public housing, etc., which will reduce government's exposure to the financing of such infrastructure projects. Five, digital mainstreaming. Digitalization will be mainstreamed in all government and public sector activities, building on the current work led by the Ministry of Communication and Digitalization. Six, energy security and diversification. Greater emphasis to be placed on developing renewable sources of energy by fast-tracking the execution of government's energy transition strategy, including but not limited to nuclear and hydrogen energy. Seven, decarbonization and climate resilience. Scaling up government's current efforts at reducing Ghana's carbon footprints and facilitating access to the carbon trading markets as well as establishing mechanisms to strengthen the country's preparedness against the negative effects of climate change. Eight, national security and defense optimization. Deploying resources to strengthen national security and defense mechanisms and infrastructure to deal substantively with emerging security threats and challenges, particularly in the Sahelian region. Nine, Downsizing government. The architecture of government will be overhauled by consolidating some existing ministries, departments, and agencies. This will mean running a lean government structure that would ensure operational efficiency and effectiveness in the delivery of government services. 10, strategic engagement with the international community. Ghana's diplomatic and economic relations with the international community under the GTP will be predicated on the principle of positive neutrality based on the strategic interests of Ghana, as well as our shared commitments for the preservation of peace around the world and respect for humanity. I will, in the next several months, provide further details of this great transformational plan in the new Alan K. Primetown talk show to be introduced I will also seek inputs from the people of Ghana as I go around in the regions and districts on my campaign tours.
fellow countrymen and women. The execution of the GTP will require our collective efforts irrespective of our political orientation, ethnicity, or religion. It will lead to a new dawn of restoration, rebuilding, and reward. The future of our country is bright. I want you, fellow countrymen and women, to make me your next president when the time comes. And you will see a significant difference in your lives. Fellow countrymen and women, I want you to invest in your own future by supporting my campaign. I will therefore be launching a mass Kitwa Bienza campaign and adopt a constituency initiative which will afford Ghanaians from all walks of life the opportunity to be a part of my campaign. For all those who will have the honor and privilege of being delegates to select the flag bearer of our great party, the MPP, please remember Alan Chamatin is your candidate to win power for you in 2024. Together, we shall break the eight. As we do say in our local Ghanaian dialects, Achia Neemui, symbolizing hope. Musa Daka Dayo, Sabodamfani Gobe, let's sacrifice for the future. Ekpedeka Metrinaho, a symbol of unity and collective effort. Mofia Mobayeni, we shall all enjoy. God bless our homeland Ghana and make our nation great and strong. I thank you for your kind attention.